In 2013, the NFL would announce that Bruno Mars would perform at the following year's Super Bowl. The last real rock act to perform at the Super Bowl was three years prior in 2010, when The Who performed. From 2005 to 2010 was a great time for rock fans when it came to the halftime show. Following the whole Nipplegate fiasco of 2004 involving Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson, the NFL wanted to play it safe, and for six years they featured some great acts including Paul McCartney, The Rolling Stones, Prince, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and of course The Who. Then from 2010 to 2013 we had the usual pop artists most rock fans could care less about. Shortly before the 2014 halftime show, Bruno Mars would announce that he'd be joined by special guest Red Hot Chili Peppers. The halftime show would be seen by 115 million people, the biggest audience in Super Bowl history at the time. Not everything went smooth though as during the planning stages Mars and the NFL butted heads. The league wanted to have the audience members wear light up bracelets to which Mars responded telling Rolling Stone, if you take that camera off me you're doing yourself a disservice. And what happened? They spent all the money on these things and it didn't work. Mars would become the youngest performer to headline the halftime show being 28 at the time. While his performance garnered rave reviews, the same couldn't be said for the Chili Peppers. Mars would perform a medley of his hits in addition to opening the show with a drum solo, honoring his late mother, and the Chili Peppers would join him on stage for the second last number, performing their 1991 hit Give It Away. The critics seemed pretty underwhelmed by the appearance of the Chili Peppers, with Entertainment Weekly criticizing their performance, calling it, and I quote, random and unnecessary, while BuzzFeed echoed a similar sentiment, while the LA Times would call the Chili Peppers' performance stale. It wasn't just the critics who slammed the Chili Peppers, as soon enough other musicians chimed in, including Living Color guitarist Vernon Reed, who pointed out that guitarist Josh Klinghoffer and bassist Flea's instruments weren't plugged in. Some accused the band of faking their live performance. A few days later, Flea would issue a statement on their performance, stating, when we were asked by the NFL and Bruno to play our song Give It Away at the Super Bowl, it was made clear to us that the vocals would be live, but the bass, drums, and guitar would be pre-recorded. I understand the NFL stance on this. Given that they only have a few minutes to set up the stage, there's a zillion things that could go wrong and ruin the sound for folks watching in the stadium and the TV viewers. There was not any room for argument on this. The NFL does not want to risk their show being boshed by bad sound, period. Drummer Chad Smith, meanwhile, took to Twitter to write, FYI, every band in the last 10 years of the Super Bowl has performed to a previously recorded track. It's the NFL's policy, period. That wasn't the only complaint concerning the Chili Peppers' performance, as Deadspin reported that the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, would receive 53 complaints about the performance, mostly about Flea and Anthony Kiedis performing shirtless, with some people worried about what the children might think. One person contacted the FCC complaining about a double standard about men being able to go topless, but not women. Even Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose would publish a letter to offer his own humorous take on the whole thing, saying, I enjoyed the show and I have no idea what the real story is, nor what I want to suggest or imply anyone was actually performing, or that what they were playing wasn't what we actually heard. That said, I feel it's important to always look on the positive side of things and to give the benefit of doubt. So consider that maybe sometime before their actual performance that rather than use a guitar cord or standard wireless, that in the name of science and for all mankind, Flea courageously had a newly invented breakthrough in microchip technology installed in his ass that picked up the frequencies of his bass and transmitted them to his amplifier. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe and we'll see you again in Rock and Ultra Stories, sticker.